Okay, next challenge. We've now got the TQ6 throttle cord, of course. I'm going to try and figure out a way and a position to install this in my cockpit. This is pretty much going to be mounted where it was in the, the demo, if you watched the review video. And that's going to be below, immediately below this GPS panel. This is going to stay where it is. The quad's going to go, I suppose, just to the right of the yoke and a bit lower down. And, I, and I'm basing that on two different things. One is just where, you know, where it naturally seems to fit, but also looking at where it's located in the Beechcraft Baron. With reference to the yoke, it's in the Baron to the right and significantly further down. To do this, and I've abandoned, by the way, in case you haven't realised already, the idea of having the quad mounted high up in the manner of the Twin Otter. So this cockpit's becoming less like a Twin Otter, in other words, as we go. So really it's becoming more of a generic aircraft every time I make an update. But that's okay, I can still fly the Twin Otter and any other aircraft I want. So there's a number of different things I've got to figure out. In passing, I'm going to remove these Cytec quadrants, of course, and there's a, a big sort of box that I've built up here originally to, to carry that. That's going to, that's going to go. There's no need for that anymore. And that's going to leave some blank space over on the right. Enough space to put another 30 centimetre square panel and a 15 by 30 panel if I should need to. So most significantly, we've got to think about what's going to happen down here. This panel's got to go. This is an important panel. It's got the fuel selector and the fuel pumps, but most importantly all the rotary controls for the nav instruments and the autopilot. It's also got the trim wheel and then this useless panel which is which looks nice but doesn't actually do anything. It's the test panel for the Twin Otter. So the rotary controls and the fuel pumps and the trim wheel, they're important. But this panel's got to move. There's two, two options that spring to mind immediately for moving this. One is to just take that out and put it down here, flat, and then to mount the throttle cord here. Now that may work, that may be aesthetically fairly acceptable. The only problem is with the, the trim wheel can't stay on it if I, if I put it there. So I'm going to have to remount the trim wheel. So I'll take that off and then these two panels have got to move somewhere else, probably over to the left hand side. Now that causes problems in its own right because the, the wiring then has to go further from the controller boards which are mounted over on the right hand side of the cockpit. That more than likely means that the cables are not going to reach and need to be extended. What do we have on these panels? Well we've got parking brake, some switches for the GPS, the flight data recorder, the autopilot manual mode switch is rudder trim, elevator uh, aileron trim on that side. So that's a very important panel. But it would be okay having that on the left, no problem with that. This panel really isn't all that necessary. I could even dispense with this. Well, it's got the gear up down switch, but I could make a new gear switch. So this panel isn't really indispensable, but again I could move it over here, subject to the limitations of the cabling. Now remembering that these panels are constructed in a sort of modular way, these are 30 by 30 centimetres. I'm going to make a 30 by 30 centimetre panel, in fact I have an old one here, which is redundant, to mount the quads. Well I'm not, I'm not going to mount it on the panel because it's very heavy, but I'm going to mount it on the structure behind there. with you know, in a suitable position so that the panel will fit over the top of it with a cutout at the right sort of scale. I'll take this faceplate off, I'll make a new one, probably out of MDF covered in sticky plastic rather than acrylic, no need for it to be acrylic. And then that quad will be nicely fared in. And then hopefully there'll be room to mount the trim wheel below the quad, or perhaps beside it, I think below Yeah, I don't think it's going to fit beside it, but there should be room below it, and that should fit nicely. Okay. 
So this is where the quad is going to go, kind of in here, probably pretty much like that. So part way there we've got I've built a little shelf here to hold the quad. I've just been experimenting with different ways of mounting the bracket on the, the quad. There's a, there's a trade off here between having it obtrusive so you could have it completely out of sight but you get the problem with that is you need a stronger mounting because you get more of a cantilever effect effectively with the quad suspended further out from the point of support if you like and because this is such a heavy thing as I said it's 2.8 kilos you know it's unrealistic to try and build something really quite that sturdy so we've got a little bit of wobble in this I don't know Hopefully that's going to be acceptable. But there you go. So that's what, what we're doing for now. Next thing to do is to put a... I've got this frame here from the old... The old panel that I've um, dismantled. So the next thing to do is just to make an MDF 30 by 30 square with a cutout for the quad and then cover it in sticky plastic or something to make it unobtrusive. I think I'm going to mount this, the panel that was here, here I've got it just sitting there at the moment experimentally. I, I'm not wildly happy about that, it's going to be perfectly usable. I don't think it looks as good as when it was in the near vertical position. But the bonus is I think the trim wheel is going to work there. I didn't think it was going to work there. I'll experiment with that but for now it looks like that's going to work. So I've transplanted the two panels that were here. Well I've, I have removed them and uh, I think I've resigned to putting these over at the other side where currently I have the fuel management panel. Now the fuel management panel doesn't really get used very much at all and uh, it's only really set up for FSX so I might do without that, or I might move that up above the existing throttle quads, so we'll see. So there it is to a first approximation. We've got the panel in, got the quad mounted. This panel down here still isn't mounted. I've got to just figure out the, the, the details of how to do this trim wheel really. Now you remember that the main fuel control panel which is also the one that has the rotary controls on has really just changed its orientation from near vertical to horizontal but its position is pretty much the same so it's in umbilical fortunately won't need to be amended but the problem with that is it's moved into a position where there were two panels existing so I've got to move those and I've moved those over to the left hand side of the cockpit which is a long way so I've got to extend the umbilicals for those two panels so this is the kind of thing here's a tip you know if you're going to do this kind of cockpit project two things first thing is to make the panels um, well okay three things really uh, I chose to make the panels modular in the sense that they were all built to a sort of grid system this is 30 by 30 centimeters I've got some other panels which are 60 by 15, 15 by 30. And so you can move these around to adjust the layout if you, if you want to do that. Now it's crucial if you do that to make the panels, or even if they're not going to be modular, to make the panels detachable, which is why I've got these RS232 connectors connecting to every panel. So you can detach the panel, you can fiddle with it, work on it, tinker with it, without having to disconnect the wiring at the controller end because 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 at the controller end the wiring is all completely anonymous no, you can't tell which wire controls which switch and so on but you don't need to if you basically disconnect that umbilical and then reconnect it the, the wiring is restored to exactly how it was so so that's the first two things if you're going to do a cockpit project like this. The third crucial thing which I neglected in my design was to 
not count on any particular layout. In other words, make the umbilicals, make all of the umbilicals, this, well, the same length, essentially, which allows you to put any panel anywhere. Uh, I've already a couple of times been caught out by this, wanting to move a panel around and then having to extend the wires. And of course, that's a real pain to do that. This is um, what I'm about to embark on for those two lower console panels. And if I tell you what a pain it is, there's two ways you can extend the umbilicals. The obvious way and the simple way and the way I'm going to do it is to detach all of the wires for this umbilical at the control end and then to solder an extension onto each wire. Now I've got to do 31 wires for the two panels I've moved, so that's going to be 31 solder joints. The other way, you can, and now the problem with that is I have to label, I've got some little paper labels here. For every wire that I detach, as I detach it, I have to label it with the board and input number that it's connected to. That's the only way that I'll be able to match them back up and not have to go through lab the laborious business of reprogramming the, the switches. The other way you could do it is you could cut the cable in the middle and I mean assuming you did that one wire at a time you wouldn't have to worry about which wire was which. But the problem with that is it, it takes two solder joints per wire to effectively be soldering an insert into the into the cable. So I'm not going to do that, that would just be stupid, that would be uh, 62 solder joints instead of 31 and uh, you know, <laughs> 31 already, 31 is enough. So we've got the wires labelled, now just time to pull them then do the soldering. Okay, so we've got the extended umbilical cables done now, and uh, I've put an extra meter on the end of each of these. That's well long enough now to reach where they need to reach. No significance to the green wire. That's what I had lying around. <laughs> um, see, we've still got the tags on the end there, so it should be a simple matter just to reattach these now, and then we should be up and running again. So here's the new layout on the right hand side, this is the quad mounted now nicely in its own little fascia and that's nice sturdy mounting actually, I was a bit worried that that was going to be a little bit rickety but now that's in place that's perfectly adequate and we've got the fuel selector panel and the rotaries down here, test panel of course which we don't really tend to use got the trim wheel here so I've reused the slot in a different orientation and that's it's not completely ideal there it's kind of slightly obscures the ADF and NAV1 rotary controls but actually not very much it's, it's not too bad so over on the other side we've got the two panels transplanted from over on the right hand side these are mounted reasonably securely now I've had to fill in the gap on the this one where the trim wheel was previously. These are going to be fairly usable over here. Mainly we use the parking brake, rudder trims there, we've got the autopilot, manual mode switches there, GPS select, flight data recorder. On this side really very little gets used the, the gear up if I'm flying the Beach Baron. Uh, these ADF controls tend not to get used so that should all be pretty good.